Earlier this week, Oregon Governor Tina Kotek unveiled her budget proposal priorities for the next two years. It's a $116.5 billion spending proposal. Her top priorities addressing housing and homelessness, funding mental health addiction services, as well as education and child care. The new governor says she will not impose any new taxes to funnel money towards these issues. Built into the state budget is a reserve fund that's called the Rainy Day Fund. Essentially, the reserve fund acts as a state's savings account. Right now, there are $2 billion in that reserve fund. Normally, we'd see more money put into that fund with a new state budget. That's exactly what Governor Kotek says she will not do in order to tackle the crises facing Oregonians. Instead, the governor wants to redirect $765 million that would have automatically gone to this reserve fund to target her top priorities. Governor Kotek's first priority, housing. She's proposing a $1 billion budget to build and preserve affordable housing. The budget recommends $770 million for new affordable housing, $118 million to preserve current affordable housing, and $4 million for manufactured housing. She also wants $2.2 million to start a new office called the Housing Production and Accountability Office. Governor Kotek is also factoring in her state of emergency declaration on the housing and homeless crises that she made on her first day in office. She spoke to that at her press conference on Tuesday. I called on the legislature to invest $130 million as soon as possible in order to meet my goal of reducing unsheltered homelessness over the course of this calendar year. This budget expands on those early investments to rehouse and maintain housing stability for households moving from unsheltered homelessness into stable housing, provide ongoing homelessness prevention support, maintain shelter operations, create new permanent supportive housing, and more. Next in the budget, Governor Kotek wants to address mental health and addiction care. She wants nearly $279 million to go to addiction treatment, overdose prevention, and peer support services. This would be funded in part by Measure 110, which decriminalized most street drugs and directed money to addiction programs. She also wants to take about $50 million to increase staffing at the Oregon State Hospital, another $195 million towards continuing to invest in behavioral health centers. Now, back in 2021, the state legislature approved a billion dollars to use for behavioral health services. Kotek says some of that money is going to good use but much of it needs to be better distributed. Here's the governor on funding mental health and addiction services. But we have more to do to build on what is working and create a connected system that can lead to hope, healing, and recovery. That's why I'm proposing investments to disrupt the harmful and expensive pipeline of Oregonians who move from homelessness to jail or the state hospital. My budget aims to do this by increasing local residential treatment options, improving jail diversion services, and enhancing intervention and outreach before patients are civilly committed. The governor says she's also looking to invest in the workforce in these sectors. This work can't be done if we don't support our essential behavioral health workers and work to build a diverse and culturally responsive workforce. We must increase wages for community health providers. My budget proposes doubling the Oregon Health Authority's Health Care Provider and Center Program, which would bring up to 1,000 new workers from diverse backgrounds into this pipeline by supporting loan repayment, scholarships, and other supports for licensed behavioral health providers and students. And that brings us to the last of the governor's main priorities, education and child care. Oregon has had some of the worst graduation rates in the nation, although the rates are improving now. Governor Kotek wants to raise the state school fund from $9.3 billion to $9.9 billion. The biggest chunk of that includes a $100 million investment for increasing literacy at preschools and elementary schools. These investments can only make the desired impact for our children and students with focused leadership and increased accountability. All of our education investments must be, spare, must be put together with specific proven strategies to ensure we know that how the dollars are being spent are connected to the education priorities that Oregonians care about and that outcomes are achieved for every child who deserves them.
Outside of her top priorities, Oregon's public defender shortage is also top of mind. Right now, the state needs nearly 1,300 public defenders to keep up with the workload. That's according to the American Bar Association. Well, the governor hopes to spend $40 million to begin hiring public defenders. Our Lisa Bailey pressed the governor on a timeline for when those positions would be filled if her budget proposal is passed by the legislature. When it comes to the public defender shortage, if lawmakers approve your ask, let's say by June, how quickly do you expect the situation to be turned around? Thank you for the question, Lisa. I think I am still waiting to see what that plan should look like. Um, I, we have to not only meet the immediate need, we're waiting to see how the Public Defense Commission deals with the 10 million they just received in the e-board. Uh, that 40 million um, is a starting point. Um, and those legislators need to have a clear plan of where they want to go in providing better services. We need system overhaul, and that $40 million is only a starting place. But just to follow on that, in other words, do you see that it's a situation that could get resolved this year? I think we are looking at multiple years to resolve completely our public defense crisis. My goal is to make sure we can um, deal with the, um, the unserved individuals now, but also talk about long-term system changes, and that is what I'm hoping we will see in collaboration with the judiciary and the legislature to make that happen. Absolutely have to get on a better course um, by the end of the legislative session. We have full coverage of the governor's budget breakdown on coin.com. And you can always find the latest political headlines on coin.com slash NW politics.